Right, guys, welcome to the first quarter final clash here between Ulster versus Munster. It's the United Rugby Championship quarter final one. And uh, it is uh, an all out Irish affair today. Um, Munster, I would say personally, is the favourites to win this game, although Ulster are the team at home today at the Kingspan Stadium. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who walks away with the victory. Either way, the winner of this game will either face uh, the uh, Stormers or Edinburgh in the semi-final. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see who's going to win. And uh, this will probably be uh, one of the teams that's going to stand in the Stormers or Edinburgh's way of reaching the final. Um, obviously, uh, Leinster are playing Glasgow in the other quarterfinal. And then the Bulls take on the Sharks. And the winner between those two will, well, between those four will play each other. So it's going to be quite interesting to see who walks away with the victory here today between Ulster and Munster. Uh, we're still about 15 minutes away from kickoff. So uh, we're just going to discuss the uh, tournament so far. I personally, from a South African perspective, uh, are so happy that the South African teams have actually joined Europe. I know there were a lot of discussion around whether South African teams should be joining this competition. And then there's obviously questions regarding whether South Africa should be joining the Six Nations as well. Um, I must say, I've watched a, a little bit of Super Rugby this morning. It's, it was the quarterfinal clash between the Crusaders and the Reds um, this morning. And I must say, the quality of rugby um, in Super Rugby is still phenomenal. You know, uh, whenever you watch the Crusaders play in a it's it's just a, a top-notch level ahead of the rest and uh, i think in this competition a lot of people see leinster as that side but i for one do rate munster quite highly as well and uh, we will go through the team lineups in just a little bit but uh, like i say i'm i'm happy as a south african to be part of the united rugby championship i think it's breathed a bit of life into uh, the Pro 14 as it used to be called. And uh, I think a lot of people expected South African teams to do well. A lot of people said that the South African teams will struggle. I mean, my colleague is from Wales and we had the discussion previously. Um, unfortunately for him, uh, there's no Welsh teams in the uh, quarterfinals of this competition. So there might be a little bit of sour grapes there, but who knows? Uh, but uh, yeah, I expected South African teams to do really well in this competition. Um, I always knew that it was either going to be Munster, Ulster or Leinster standing in the way of the South African teams winning this competition and rightfully so. So here's two of the teams playing up against each other today and uh, we'll see who progress. Let's quickly go through the team lineups for this game. Um, for Ulster, we've got Steve, Stuart Moore. Robert Balakun, uh, James Hume, Stuart McCloskey, Ethan McElroy, Billy Burns, and John Cooney in the back line. Um, they have lost one of their star players for this quarterfinal, the fullback uh, McElroy, who will not uh, be playing in this game today. So Stuart Moore comes in for him, and he's got some big boots to fall today for this uh, Ulster side, but a very good and formidable back line. I mean, Balakun has been part of the uh, Ulster setup for quite some time. Um, James Hume and Stuart McCloskey, two very good centers. McCloskey, a hard hitting uh, center, gets over the advantage line and always take a couple of defenders with him. While uh, Billy Burns and John Cooney, a very experienced uh, fly off, strong off pair there for the two teams as well. So, uh, yeah, it should be interesting to see what this team do in front of their home crowd today. Um, forwards wise, Andrew Warwick, Rob Herring, uh, Tom O'Toole, Ian Henderson, Alan O'Connor, Marcus Rea, Nick Timothy, or Timoni, and then Dwayne Vermeulen. So watch out for this uh, loose uh, trio of Ulster today. A very formidable side with Marcus Rea, Nick Timoni, and Dwayne Vermeulen. Uh, Ian Henderson and Alan O'Connor in the lock combination just as potent. And then Tom O'Toole, for me, has been one of the standout uh, prop forwards in Irish rugby as of late with Rob Herring, um, a world-class hooker for uh, this Ulster side as well. So 
Let's quickly go and have a look at their bench for today. John Andrew, Eric O'Sullivan, um, then Gareth Miller, Sinovic, uh, Kieran Treadwell, Matty Rea, Nathan Duark, uh, Ian Madigan, and Ben Mocken. Um, I must say, I was quite impressed with uh, Nathan Doak. Um, he's been quite impressive at scrum off, and it was kind of surprising that they decided to go with uh, John Cooney. But I'm guessing they're going for the experience of John Cooney for this uh, quarterfinal clash between the two sides. Um, we'll go through the Munster side in just a bit, and uh, we'll go through that team lineup, and I'll tell you why I would say. I fancy the Munster side to win this game today as well, because they have been quite uh, busy with the European Cup or the Heineken Cup and uh, trying to find a place in that playoffs and didn't work out for them in the end. And I also feel that the fact that they are playing for their coach, it's his last season with Munster before moving to Bath. And uh, Johan van Kran has been an incredible coach for this Munster side since the time that Rassi Erasmus were at Munster. So, uh, yeah, a lot uh, a lot up for grabs for this Munster side. Alpi Pissa says, uh, whatever the result, I think it will be South African team against Irish team in the final. And, uh, yeah, um, either way, I think Alfie, uh, like I said, it's going to be Leinster up against Glasgow. I don't I don't see Glasgow beating Eden uh, Leinster any time. But you never know, with playoffs, anything can happen. Uh, the Bulls and Sharks will be there in the semi-final, either one of them. And then the Stormers got it all to lose against uh, Edinburgh. when They play at home against them. So uh, you're right, we could see a South African team against an Irish team in the final. Or we can dream big and say it's going to be an all-out South African final. But you never know. Um, let's quickly go and have a look at the team lineup for Munster. Uh, Mike Haley, Andrew Conway, Chris Farrell, Damien Dialendi, Keith Earls, Joey Carberry, and Conan Murray in the back line. And if you look at that back line, it's an absolutely fantastic back line with the likes of Chris Farrell and Damien Dialendi in the, in the midfield. Expect Damien Dialendi to do exactly what McCloskey will be doing. And then Chris Farrell is a very clever uh, center himself and a very good international player. Andrew Conway and Keith Earls speak for themselves experience all around for this too and then Conor Murray and Joey Carberry uh, a lot of people say Joey Carberry is the successor to Johnny Sexton we'll have to wait and see if that's going to happen today but I mean the experience of Conor Murray will class scrum off and probably one of the best at a time in his career so expect this backline to really go after this Ulster side they got the forwards to do that and here is the forwards as well Joss uh, Wickerly, Neil Scannell, Stephen Archer, Jean Klein, Benin Wickerly, Peter Romani, Alex Kendallin, and Gavin Coombs. Now, a lot has been said about Gavin Coombs uh, lately. He's uh, one of the youngsters coming through for Irish rugby, and uh, I've seen him play, and he's played really well up until now. So, and I mean, the likes of Neil Scannell has been valiant for them as well. Peter Romani. Um, the captain of this uh, Munster side, expect him to do some great work there for them as well. And uh, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to who wants it most. And I think at the end of the day, I think Munster wants it more than uh, Ulster. Then on the bench, you've got uh, Diarmut Barron, Jeremy Lofman, John Ryan, Jason Jenkins, um, Thomas Ahern, Craig Casey, Ben Healy and Chris Clutter. So a couple of South Africans in this fixture as well today between these two Irish giants today. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, which team is going to run away with it. Sparrow Maravilla says, I think Ulster will take it. And then Sakabula says, I agree. love the idea of two South African teams to be in the final in the first season. Yeah, that, that would be quite something extraordinary. You know, uh, everybody said... Uh, South African teams will dominate, or from a South African perspective, said that we were going to dominate this competition if we join in. And in uh, last year with the Rainbow Cup final, uh, we played Benetton in the final. The Bulls traveled to Benetton and they got absolutely hammered in that final. So, uh, yeah, and then I think everybody's eyes uh, opened up a little bit here in South Africa and uh, we realized that it's going to be a tough tournament. 
And again now, again, everybody's talking about Leinster. Leinster this, Leinster that. Leinster's stronger than anybody. Leinster will destroy anybody they play against. I don't think it's the case. I mean, uh, the Bulls weren't at full strength when they beat in them. Leinster might not have been at full strength when they traveled South Africa, but look what happened in, in the final of the Heineken Cup when La Rochelle beat them because of that inconsistency in their squad. Playing a B team this week, playing an A team that week, it does uh, cause for a bit of concern at the end of the day. So whether they will find a feed in time, you might, we might even see Glasgow do the job tomorrow, but uh, it's highly unlikely. And uh, I think what we need to concentrate on the fact that uh, we first need to get over the hurdles. We know at least we're going to have one South African team in the semifinals, regardless. Either the Bulls or the, or the Sharks will be there. And like I said, it's up to the Stormers. It's theirs to lose against Edinburgh. And uh, yeah, it's good to see that we're competitive in our first season. I uh, thought it was going to be a little bit tougher, but... Uh, yeah, the quality of this competition is quite good. Like I said, I've watched a little bit of uh, Super Rugby this morning, and I think uh, we are on par. And I think uh, the New Zealand uh, teams might be a little bit, or not the teams, but New Zealand itself might be a little bit worried that the quality of their rugby might go down a little bit since the South African teams are not part of it anymore. So uh, I'm just checking the head-to-head -head stats now. So they played each other 41 times as Munster and Ulster. And uh, Munster do have the advantage of 21 victories, I think it is, or 22 victories. So, uh, yeah, it just tells you that uh, my prediction might be right. But again, with Ulster playing at home at the Kingspan Stadium and anything can happen on the day. Um, we're still a, a couple of minutes away from kickoff, around about 10 minutes to go. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's all or nothing for both of these two teams who will come out on top. Um, we'll find out in about 90 minutes time from now, unless there's not extra time and we're going into extra time. But uh, it's highly unlikely. I personally think Munster by five today. Um, I just think they've got the experience in the back line to match Ulster in every facet of the game. And... Uh, yeah, looking forward to see this uh, both sides, really, because both play very attractive rugby. And at the end of the day, I don't really care who wins, but uh, I, am a, I am a gambler. And uh, if I have to gamble, I would definitely put my money on Munster to win this game. They just got enough uh, firepower to put that moment of magic in this game. The likes of Gavin Coombs. Um, Lots of Peter Omani and the likes of uh, Key Foles and all those players just to finish off the job for them. I think that's going to be enough for them to reach the semifinals of this competition. Whether it's going to be good enough to go all the way to the final, we'll have to wait and see what the Stormers do tomorrow against Edinburgh. Because I don't think Munster will come to South Africa and beat the Stormers in Cape Town. But you never know. So... Uh, yeah, we're very close to the start of this game in about uh, five minutes time from now. I'm going to take a quick break, but when I do come back, we will be crossing over for the uh, game between Ulster and Munster.
Right, we are back, and uh, the game should be starting any any minute now. The teams uh, will be uh, running onto the field in just a short bit. Uh, not your everyday cultists. It's not half time yet. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how this one pans out. Uh, we are about to start this game. Uh, the teams will come onto the field real soon. Um, so, yeah, um, we'll go through the team lineup one more time. Before the start of this game, we'll start with the Ulster side. We've got Steve Stuart Moore coming in for McElroy, who uh, will not be playing in this game. Then Robert Vallecoon, James Hume, Stuart McCloskey, Ethan McElroy, Billy Burns, and John Cooney in the back line. So plenty of experience there with the likes of James Hume, Stuart McCloskey, Billy Burns, and John Cooney. Then in the forwards, we've got Andrew Warwick. Uh, Rob Herring, Tom O'Toole, Ian Henderson, Alan O'Connor, Marcus Rea, Nick Timoni, and Joanne Vermeulen. And looking at this back of forwards, the, the biggest threat for Munster today will be this loose trio of Marcus Rea, Nick Timoni, and Joanne Vermeulen. But uh, also look out for Tom O'Toole. He's a very versatile uh, prop forward. And Rob Herring, we know, is a quality international player, along with Ian Henderson, the captain of today's game. Then on the bench... You've got John Andrew, Erica Sullivan, Gareth, Melissa Novick, uh, Kieran Treadwell, Mackie Rio, Nathan Doak, Ian Madigan, and Ben Moax. So plenty of uh, firepower there in the back line as well for this side. Um, we'll go through the Munster side real soon as well. Um, and then uh, Mac McCloskey has been on fire this season, says not your everyday cultist. Absolutely. And then Christopher Potkita says Munster by 12. And then Antoinette Gerber asks, Guy Guru, who is your favorite Munster or Ulster? So I will go with uh, Munster for this game. Um, I think uh, they've just got more experience. And then Not Your Everyday Culture says Ulster by 7. So let's quickly go through the team of uh, Munster. So we've got Mike Haley, Andrew Conway, Chris Farrell, Damian Dialendi, Keith Ills, Joey Carberry, and Conor Murray, back with Irish internationals, Andrew Conway, Chris Farrell, Keevils, Joey Carberry, and Conor Murray, and then Damien Dialendi, obviously the Springbok uh, inside centre as well. And then uh, forward wise, Josh uh, Wickerly, Neil Scannell, Stu Stephen Archer, Jean Klein, Benin Wickerly, Peter Romani, Alex uh, Kendallin, and Gavin Coombs. And uh, my standout player here, Gavin Coombs. Um, and Peter Omani should uh, be able to neutralize that loose trio of Ulster today. And then on the bench, we've got uh, Diarmut Barron, uh, Jeremy Hoffman, uh, John Ryan, Jason Jenkins, Thomas Ayern, Greg Casey, Ben uh, Healy, and Chris Kluter for this uh, Munster side as well. So looking forward to a great game as uh, Munster is now onto the field. And uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. It's uh, it's very cold where I'm where I'm at now, and uh, yeah, definitely shaking up for this uh, one. I hope this game is on fire so that my voice can actually reflect my body temperature at the moment. Um, not your everyday cult that says it's Damien Galendi versus Dwayne from Yellen today. Barry says hi, Guru. We meet again. LOL. Yeah, looking forward to this one as Ulster make their way onto the field as well. So it's John Cooney um, making his way onto the field for Ulster today. And uh, this guy being a great servant of Irish rugby and uh, probably playing in the shadow of a couple of really good uh, scrum offs, especially the likes of Conor Murray previously. Um, not your everyday cult that says, best of luck to my Irish friends over up in the north. So this is an all-out Irish clash, for those of you who didn't know. It is Ulster against Munster, with uh, Munster probably being the favourites to win this game. But let's see how this one pans out. All the players are on the field. Yaku Paper from South Africa is the referee for this game. He's going to be assisted by Ben Blair, Blair, uh, ben Blair I think it is. And uh, we'll see how things go from here. But... Uh, this game is about to start, and uh, good luck to both teams involved. May the best team win. It is going to be uh, Billy Burns to get this uh, quarterfinal underway. The first ever United Rugby Championship uh, quarterfinal. And it's a knock-on from 
from Munster very early on in this game from the kickoff. So it's going to be a scrum down to Ulster, five meters out from the 22. Poor start from Munster. Right, so not the start that uh, this guy would have wanted. And it's Peter Romani who knocked that ball on from the kickoff. So poor start here for Munster. It is a, a first scrum down here for Ulster and a chance for them to really set the tone in this uh, quarterfinal. Let's see what they can do with this one. Barry Green says, I don't know why uh, it feel you're doing a lot of scream again. You're always uh, with us every two weeks. <laughs> no, man, uh, I'm trying to be there every weekend, Barry. <laughs> and then uh, what a start from the lads in red. This will be interesting, says uh, your everyday cultist as the first scrum goes down and uh, yeah, we'll have a reset scrum here after just about a minute of play in this uh, first quarter final of the United Rugby Championship. Johan van Graan, the monster coach, leaving the, the team after this season, going to Bath. Right. Let's see what's going to happen from this first scrum. Ulster playing in white and Munster in red. It feels uh, weird. That's what I'm saying. LOL. <laughs> well, let's see how this goes. Um, John Cooney controlling that ball at the back. Dwayne Vermeulen has done well. Now out the back they go. Buddy Burns, Della Coon up to the 22 meter line they go. But quickly over that ball was Opito Marnie who steals that. And now Timoni, he takes it up for uh, Munster. And uh, Connor Murray with a kick over the top. Here comes the chase from Key Falls. It is going to be collected by uh, Ulster on the 10 meter line here. Yeah, an opportunity for them. Ulster just setting it up nicely as uh, they work it through the forwards here. It's Alan O'Connor who took it up for them. Now of white they go. Here's an opportunity for Ulster as they're still on the 10 meter line. Trying to find a bit of space there. It's uh, Hume who tried to look for a bit of ground there. Here comes Billy Burns up to the 10 meter line they go again. Now it's uh, John Cooney gets it up and uh, it's taken up by McCloskey. He's driven back in the tackle, run about on a 10 meter line in the middle of the field. John Cooney again. He gets it up to Billy Burns, puts a little step through, grab a kick from him into the hands of, uh, of uh, Key Falls. Now, oh, it's been charged down uh, from uh, the fullback there. Mike Haley's kick been charged down, but a little knock on from Ulster and it will be a monster feed. It's a little shaky start here for Munster as Ulster is doing all the playing at the moment. Conway's pass to uh, Haley. Uh, the kick from Haley charts down. And then luckily for Munster, just a small little knock on from Ulster. So they need to be on their game today. They're letting uh, little mistakes cost them at the moment. Eric Davison says, be a score jump. Come on, Ulster. And uh, Barry says, I do hope to see you more often doing these streams. No, I will. Uh, definitely. As soon as the international season starts, Barry, it's going to be full throttle, full force. Tomorrow, we are also going to do a few games. Maybe I'll even pop in for a Super Rugby quarterfinal. Who knows? Right. So, scrum down it is now for, for uh, Munster. And it's going to Murray, who's going to feed this ball for Munster inside their own 22. We've had about three and a half minutes to four minutes gone in this one. Conor Murray will feed this ball for Munster. And uh, it's about 15 meters out from the Munster try line. Conor Murray with the feed. Solid scrum here at the back, controlled beautifully. And it's uh, taken in by Kevin Coombs of the back. Now there's a kick over the top from Munster and it's gonna find touch roundabout on the 10 meter line. Conor Murray clearing that ball four months there. so four minutes gone in this one <clears throat> not your everyday cultist says imagine if glasgow beat leinster and the sharks played glasgow at home that would be quite something you know <laughs> but first the sharks will have to get past the bulls right so hearing with the throw into this lineup for ulster on a 10 meter line of monster it's taken by henderson now john cooney of the back it's straightened up by mccloskey Quick ball coming back for them. 
Now it's Billy Burns out through the back. They go to Dalakun. Dalakun with a little stab through, but uh, charts down by Munster. And now they've managed to pick this ball up. It is uh, taken by Haley. Puts another kick in behind. He's still chasing his own kick, but the touch line will win. And it goes in directly into touch. So we'll have a line up round right about on halfway here. Ulster looking dangerous early on in this uh, quarter final here after just five minutes of play. John Cooney got it out to Billy Burns on a loop around, out to Delacoon, put it on the boot, but the charts down from Mike Haley. Then he kicked it ahead. And uh, unfortunately, on the uh, second kick, he got it out directly into touch. So Rob Herring with the throw in right on halfway. It's been stolen by Munster. It's a bit sloppy off the back, and uh, Conor Murray trying to keep it in play. Keith Earls gets it out to Gavin Coombs, but the touch judge uh, flag is up, and we will have a line out to Ulster round about uh, just inside the half of uh, Munster. Right. So, still a bit of a stop start at the moment. Yeah, Conor Murray ran that into touch, unfortunately, as he tried to keep that ball in play. From that stolen line out. So run about on the 10 meter line of Munster now. It is Ulster with another line out throw. Rob Herring again. Six minutes gone in this uh, first half of the first quarter final in the URC. Taken by Ian Henderson of the back. Rob Herring out to McCloskey. He straightens the line. Takes about two players with him, but there's a little knock on from Ulster again. Advantage now to Munster. Connor Murray waiting for that ball at the back of the ruck as he's just going to slow things down a little bit. Munster now working it through the forts. Gavin Coombs sets it up nicely for them. Again, just uh, patiently waiting for this ball. is going to marry at the moment. The experience counting for a lot here. Goes with a box kick over the top. Chase coming from Keith Earls. Taken by Della Cooney for Ulster, though. And uh, they've got possession right on halfway now. Ian Henderson driven back in the tackle. A good counter ruck here from Munster as uh, they're trying to win that ball. John Cooney gets it out nicely for them. They are going to work it through the forwards. It's Dwayne for Mielen, but a high tackle. And uh, it is going to be a penalty to Ulster for that high tackle on Dwayne for Mielen. It is uh, Fanin Wickerly who got penalized there for a high tackle on Dwayne for Mielen. Right, so about seven and a half minutes gone in this first half. Ulster now putting this one into the corner, trying to set up a good attacking lineup. It's about 10 meters out from the Munster try line. Ulster with the first opportunity in this game. Eric Davison says six minutes, no points, no penalties, no offsides. And uh, yeah, there's the first penalty now, Eric Davison. So let's see what Ulster can do with this. Uh, they're about, well, it's five meters out from the Munster try line. Here's a great opportunity for Ulster to set the tone for this uh, first quarter final. Eight minutes gone. Right, Herring throws it out to Ian Henderson. The driving ball set up now by Ulster. And this is one area where they could be dangerous is with their forwards. As uh, Herring controls that ball at the back of this uh, mall for the, for, the, for the Ulster side. Slowly but surely working their way up through the middle here. Advantage to Ulster now. The ball has been sacked by Munster. Now John Cooney gets it out to McCoskey. He sets it straight. Now it's uh, Cooney again out to Billy Burns. Now it's Hume on a cutback, but he's tackled backwards and loses the ball. And uh, Jakob Paper will come back for the penalty to Ulster again. Now there's a bit of a scuffle here between the players. Expect a couple of those throughout this uh, quarterfinal. It's uh, an all-Irish clash here. Oh, Munster has taken that penalty quickly, and they've scored a try. Wow, wow. That is very controversial. Yaku Paper awards the try, and Munster has been left uh, in the dark there. Clever thinking by uh, the Ulster side, as they get the first try of this game, after a little bit of a scuffle between players, John Cooney had nothing of it. They played on and uh, just went on with it. Brilliant thinking from uh, Ulster as uh, they just were quick. Gavin, well, it was you who, who took the quick tap and passed it out to John Cooney. While there was still a scuffle going on in the back, 
between the two teams. But uh, it is Ulster on the board for the first points of this game. And a sneaky try, to say the least, as uh, John Cooney will try and convert his own try now. Five points to the Ulster leading this uh, first quarter final. A very, very sneaky try to score in a big match like this. Jakob Paper say, well, if you want to have a scuffle there in the background, the rest of the players want to play rugby. So let's get on with it. So five points to nil. Ulster is leading this one. And uh, the conversion to come from John Cooney. He struck it well. It's seven points to nil. Ulster leading this uh, first quarterfinal clash. The first ever quarterfinal of the United Rugby Championship as uh, Ulster lead by seven points to nil. Well, there was about, uh, around about eight players involved in the scuffle and they just decided to play on. So uh, you can call it controversial if you want to. Seven points to nil. It's Ulster leading Munster here in this game. Here comes the restart. We've had about 11 minutes in this game. And uh, now it's uh, Ulster controlling that ball inside their 22. They've set it up nicely here. Just waiting for that ball. Uh, where's John Cooney? So Dwayne Vermeulen sets it up nicely for Ulster. John Cooney now waiting for this ball to come out of the back of the ruck. About 10 meters from his own try line is uh, John Cooney now. He is going to go with the box kick over the top. Looking for touch. And he's going to find it round right about on the 10 meter line inside his own half. So Munster will have the line out here, round right about on the 10 meter line of uh, Munster, of Ulster. Right, 12 minutes gone in this one. It's seven points to nil, Ulster leading. And it's Scannell now to throw this one in for Munster. Munster now, Neil Scannell with the throw into this line out. On the 10 meter line with the throw in, finds uh, his jumper quite nicely. Now, Connor Murray, Damien Dialendi, Gavin Coombs have straightened that ball up over the 10 meter line. Now, taking it up beautifully was Alex Kendallin. Kendallin making a couple of meters. Now, it's uh, again taken up beautifully through the forwards. John Co uh, Connor Murray waiting for it. Oh, it's been disrupted by Ian Henderson, and it's a turnover ball for Ulster. But uh, they do get it back, and it's going to be a scrum down to Ulster for a little knock-on from uh, Munster. So everything that can go wrong for Munster at the moment is going wrong. Ian Henderson contesting that, letting that ball slip out of Conor Murray's hands. So great work from the uh, captain of Ulster here, just disrupting that ball from, or dislodging that ball from the hands of Conor Murray. Great work so far from uh, the men in white. Right, scrum down right in the middle of the field between the 10 and the 22 of Ulster. It's going to be John Cooney to feed this ball in for Ulster. This first uh, 15 minutes of this game has flown by and it's Ulster in control so far of this one. Right, big scrum again from Ulster now trying to push uh, Munster. It comes back now, John Cooney out to Billy Burns. It's you with a little stab through. Here comes Delacone chasing after this, but the touch line is going to win, and it will be a line out to Munster just inside their own half, between the 10 and the halfway line. Right, interestingly, Ulster just trying to keep Munster on the back foot throughout this game, whether it's running or kicking. They're doing a good job, and it's uh, it's uh, done to perfection at the moment from these guys. That little step through from uh, from Hume were absolutely perfectly placed. And now Scannell to throw this one in again now for Munster. Run about on the 10-meter line inside their own half. He finds his jumper, and it's Kellen who takes it in. Penalty now to Munster. Disruption in the lineup, playing the player in the air, and... Uh, it is going to be a penalty to Munster now as Peter Omani taking a little bit long to stand up from that uh, interference from Ulster. Right, now Carberry with a kick downfield here for Munster. He's going to, oh, he's, yeah, he is going to find touch. Run about between the 10 and the 22 meter line. 
of Ulster. So let's see how this one is going to go for them now. It's a great uh, attacking opportunity for them as uh, Alex Kendallin and Gavin Coombs will look to uh, set things up here for them. Okay, it's taken off the back now. And here comes Connor Murray. Gets out to Carberry, knocks it on again. And now it's a counter-attack opportunity here for them. As McCloskey kicks it downfield. Nobody at the back here for Munster. But that ball is fortunately going to roll, 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 roll over the dead ball line. And they're going to have to go all the way back for a scrum down from where he kicked at. And that is just outside of the 22. So uh, it will be a scrum down to Munster as uh, as he did uh, play the advantage already. So, or will we come back? Jakub Paper saying we might be coming back for that knock on first. But uh, it looks like we are going to have that scrum to uh, Munster because uh, technically advantage is over when you kick it. So it was knocked on by uh, Joey Carberry and then kicked. Well, from inside the 22 by uh, McCloskey. And that ball went all the way over the dead ball line. So let's see what the call from Yaku Paper will be. 16 and a half minutes gone in this one. So it will be a scrum to Munster then from where he kicked it. And uh, one would feel that Munster got away with it there. Right, Connor Murray to feed this one in for Munster now. And a good opportunity for them right in the middle of the field. On the 22 meter line it is controlled by gavin Humes. now now it's gonna murray carberry gets the pass out beautifully and uh, it's farrell who took it up now uh the hands not so good from Munster. it's keith also picks it up off the sloppy pass now connor murray again now it's uh, taken up by jean Klein. jean Klein sets it up nicely now here they come again it is scandal who took it up for them now again carberry Inside is Farrell. Farrell into a bit of space. Just up over the 22-meter line. Now it's a Carberry again. Connor Murray back to Scannell now. Scannell sets it up about 10 meters up from the try line. Connor Murray gets it up to the big boys. It's a Stephen Archer who takes it up. Now it's a Kendallin again who takes it up for them. Now Coombs. Coombs sets it up about uh, five meters up from the try line, right in the middle of the field now. Connor Murray gets it up now. The big boy is taking it up. Again, Archer not gaining too much ground. Here comes Farrell again. Farrell just sets it up five meters up from the try line. Penalty advantage coming now for Con for uh, Munster. Scannell again. Still five meters up from the try line. Now Connor Murray out wide it comes to Jean Klein. Jean Klein sets it up four meters out. Gavin Coates have picked it up. Has he gotten over the trial? I know he's a meter short. Is uh, Gavin Coombs. Now Connor Murray waiting for this one to come back. Oh, there's a knock on from. No, surely not. The referee has awarded a try, but I think there might have been a knock on from Jean Klein. The try has been awarded to Jean Klein, but I think they will go upstairs for it. And uh, it's looked like a like a knock on straight away, but uh, Jakub Paper flagged it on and says try. So uh, we'll go upstairs to see whether a try has been scored or not. But certainly it looked like he knocked that on. Well, it came off his boot. So excuse me. So it came off John Klein's boot, and then he picked it up again and dotted it down. What a weird try to score! <laughs> Bit of uh, luck on his side there as he collected that ball off the boot and uh, scored the try. That is an amazing try if it's going to stand. So they're going to have another look at this quickly. So it touches his boot, then it touches his hands. Does it touch the ground? No, it doesn't. He recollects the ball and uh, goes to ground. And then just places the ball over the try line. That that should be a try, unless uh, something else have come up. So let's see what Yaku Paper says here. And uh, uh, the try is going to 
Let's see what he says. Oh, I can't hear what he says. So let's just see whether he awards the try or not. Yeah, the try has been awarded. So Jean Plain has scored the try here for them. And it's seven points all here with that conversion from Joey Carberry. So it's all square here after about uh, three minutes of play in this first quarter final between Munster and Ulster. Interesting start. First, we saw a, a bit of a controversial try from uh, John Cooney. And now you could almost say the same about the Jean Plain try. So it's all square here at the Kingspan. It's seven all as uh, replacement on the field here as uh, it's Eric O'Sullivan replacing uh, Andrew Warwick early in this uh, game for Ulster. So the restart taken by Munster inside the 22 now as they just set it up for Connor Murray. Connor Murray will take his time with this kick. 20 minutes gone in this game between uh, Munster and Ulster. The kick over the top from Connor Murray is not going to find touch and into the hands they go of Ulster. Here's an opportunity for the counter attack. It's taken by McElroy. McElroy now out to John Cooney to Rob Herring on the 10 meter line of Munster. Another go. Billy Burns sets it up for Ian Henderson now. John Cooney again. Tom O'Toole sets it up. Tom O'Toole now. John Cooney, Billy Burns again. Working it for oh, there's a knock on now from O'Sullivan, and here's a counter attack from Munster as uh, Carberry kicks that downfield. Here comes the chase from Key Falls, but the touch one is going to win. And uh, I think, in fact, the ball was kicked into touch by John Cooney, so it will be a Munster lineup. Let's just have another look here. So the kick got kicked downfield, and then, uh, yeah, it's John Cooney who puts it into touch, so it should be. A monster line out five meters out from the 22. So 21 minutes gone in this uh, first quarter final, and it's seven all at the moment. Munster with an opportunity to attack now. Right, so line out the scandal is going to throw this one in for the uh, Munster side. They are going to look for the jumper here, and it is going to be. Uh, Taken in by Klain, and here's a chance now for them again. Taken up by Gavin Coombs, up to the 22-meter line. Connor Murray changes the direction to the left side, but it's left behind by Mike Haley. Picked up again by Joey Carberry now. Joey Carberry sets it up nicely. He's recovered well for Munster. Run about uh, on the 10-meter line inside the uh, Ulster's half now. It's been taken up Connor Murray now. Damien Dialendi. Dialendi sets it up. Takes uh, two defenders with him. Just between the 22 and the 10 meter line. Connor Murray again. Now out the back door they go. Here's a charge from the big forwards. Still just outside of the 22. Now they work their way. Farrell to straighten the line here for them. Still outside the 22. Connor Murray. Now they work at Carberry. Carberry out. It comes to Gavin Cumes again. Not held in the tackle. Five feet short of the 22. Now comes out Tia Lendi. Tia Lendi beats one. Tia Lendi still going up over the 22. He does. Takes another two defenders with him. About 15 meters out from the try line now is a monster. Working it back on the inside. Here they come with a big prop forward. Five meters out from the try line. It was Stephen Archer who nearly went over. Now back on the inside to uh, Conway. Still just two meters short is monster now from the try line. Connor Murray is waiting for it. Now it comes out. Here's an opportunity. They just need to get it through the hands, but a thumping try-saving tackle from Balakun on Carberry, and it's going to be a penalty to Ulster, holding on by Joey Carberry. He just needed to get that last pass out to the winger, and uh, Munster would have been in the corner, but a brilliant try-saving tackle from uh, Delacun, the right winger of Ulster. Thumping tackle, beautiful work, and uh, they stopped them in their tracks. Brilliant stuff. What work uh, done there by the right winger. Definitely saving a try there for Ulster. Right, now the kick downfield from uh, Billy Burns is going to find touch runabout between the 10 and the halfway line inside the Munster's half. 23 and a half minutes gone in this game. And uh, nothing separating these two teams at the moment. 
36 tackles made by Alster, 26 tackles made by Munster so far. Rob Herring with the throw into this lineout. He finds his jump, and now it's John Cooney out to Billy Burns, straightening the line now through the hands. Della Coon, Della Coon into a bit of space, gets it out beautifully. Yes, a chance on the left for McElroy. McElroy back on the inside. It's going to be trot down to Stephen Moore. Or Stuart Moore is going to get the, first, the second try for Ulster. And some brilliant work by Ulster, ripping the monster defense to pieces there. And it was started by, by Della Coon way back from where he did the try saving tackle to the gap that he took, put in McElroy into space. And then from there, it was just brilliant running from them. Great hands from Ulster. And in uh, some great work from McElroy, cutting back inside, getting the uh, support play from Stuart Moore. And Ulster is over for their second try of this game. Great entertaining rugby so far from these two sides and living up to the expectations. Remember, I need to compare Super Rugby with URC, and uh, after watching that uh, first semi or quarterfinal this morning, this one is right up there with the best. 25 minutes gone, 12 points to 7 Ulster lead, with a straightforward conversion coming up, so it should be 14 points to 7 to Ulster, around about after 26 minutes of play in this game. What an effort from uh, Ulster. The conversion is over, and it's 14 points to 7, Ulster leading this game. Great work so far. We've got 49 votes. Who will win? Ulster got 59% of the votes, Munster 41. So keep that votes coming in as uh, the game progress. It's 14 points to 7, Ulster leading Munster at the moment. Right. Karen Claynon says, so whoever wins between Shark and Bulls will have to travel to Europe, and winning over there is very difficult. I don't see the Stormers beating three Euro teams to win the Cup. You never know, Cameron. You never know. Right, so from that kickoff, Munster has managed to secure that ball. Now Joey Carberry up to the 22-meter line they go. Now Connor Murray. And uh, into touch it goes, unfortunately. And uh, it is going to be a line out now to uh, Ulster right on the 22 meter line. Right, sorry for that disruption, but uh, there's any way of stoppage in play now. Uh, Billy Burns have stayed down, so uh, just receiving some attention quickly. Possession going the way of Munster was 62% of the possession so far, but on the scoreboard, it's all Ulster at the moment. 14 points to 7. 26 and a half minutes gone in this game so far. Right, so Ulster with the lineup thrown here from the 22 meter line. Rob Herring. Gets it out to uh, his jumper, Dwayne Vermeulen now. Uh, more has been set up by Ulster as they try and make a, a, some headway through this driving mall, but not gaining any ground. Now John Cooney waiting for it. Now goes to the box kick over the top and the chase coming from McElroy. But uh, the touchline will win and it was kicked directly into touch. So we will go all the way back to the 22-meter line now for a line out to Munster. Eric Davison says the SA team showed better away than uh, they did the Euro teams in SA. Not quite sure if I'm reading that correctly, Eric, but uh, let's see how this one pans out first. So uh, we'll know in about uh, six, well, around about uh, 50 minutes' time who's going to be the first uh, semi finalist of the URC. 
But so far, Ulster leading by 14 points to 7. But uh, Munster on the attack now from just outside the 22 of Ulster. Neil Scannell now with the throw into this lineup. It's taken beautifully. And they set up a driving mall themselves. Now Connor Murray off the back gets it out to Dialendi. Dialendi straightening the line beautifully. About 15 meters up now. Munster. It's going to be taken up by Gavin Coombs. Gavin Coombs still going. He's about seven meters short now. Here they come again. Oh, there's a little knock on from Munster. And uh, it's going to be a scrum down to Ulster. Five meters out from their own try line. It's Josh uh, Wickerly who's knocked that ball on. 12 minutes to go in this first half. And Munster do look a lot stronger with ball in hand at the moment. They just need to break down this white wall if they want to get over, just to get rid of that little mistakes at the moment. But uh, I'll spread it to Ulster. They're doing a really good job at the moment. Just keeping them out. Right, five meters up from the Ulster try line. It is John Cooney now who's going to feed this ball in for Ulster. Defensive uh, scrum coming up for Ulster. Right, as solid as you can get, John Cooney gets that ball out to Billy Burns, who puts it on the boot, and uh, a very good kick. Not going to find touch, though, and now it's a chance here for Mike Haley again on the attack. Gets the pass out to Conor Murray. He let it slip backwards. In fact, he's knocked it on, and it's going to be a penalty to Ulster, the player playing the ball in front of the knock, and uh, we was in front of the guy that knocked the ball. So penalty to Ulster then. And uh, the luck is on their side at the moment. Cameron Claynard says, uh, I foresee in two, three year time, if all S18 keep playing in Europe, that we will have seven, eight South African players in England, Scotland, Ireland, the Wales rugby squads playing against the Springboks. It's not impossible. It's not impossible, Cameron. Uh, the way things are going at the moment, uh, it is uh, where the money is. And unfortunately, uh, I'll, we can't afford to keep all our players in South Africa. So, uh, yeah, Rob Herring with a throw in just uh, between the 10 and the 22 of Munster. Now Rob Herring off the back. Get it out to McCloskey who straightens the line. Quick ball now. John Cooney gets it out to Tom O'Toole. Sets it up again. Still about uh, five meters out from the 22. Now McCloskey puts in a little grabber kick. But it's been taken beautifully by Conor Murray. But the referee's going to call him back. What is the problem again now? A little knock on, says the referee. Wasn't that charts down? No, it wasn't. It was a little stab through. So, uh, yeah, just a little knock on from Conor Murray. It was uh, stopped by the uh, by Peter O'Mahony through the boot, and then uh, just a little knock from Conor Murray in the process. So, 14 points to seven, it still is, with about nine minutes to go in this first half. Can uh, Ulster attack again? They've got a great attacking opportunity just outside the 22 now. Our people have said, Munster is not good at the moment, but Ulster plays very well in rugby. And it's doing Munster on fout to make. Yeah, that's exactly that. Right, so here they come now is uh, Ulster off the back. And a great attacking opportunity. Timoni took it up. Now Jan Henderson up over the 22 meter line, right in the middle of the field. John Cooney now, Tom O'Toole again. He's a little bit isolated, but they do get it back. Cooney now, Billy Burns, out it goes to uh, Hume, back to McCloskey. Just setting up, just up over the 22, about 15 meters out now. Billy Burns, here's a chance out wide. They go, oh, great tackle on Stuart Moore there. Just preventing that last pass. Now Cooney again, Tom O'Toole. Still about 15 meters out from the try line. Now working his way is O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan sets it up in the middle of the field, 15 meters out. Now it's uh, McCloskey back on the inside. They go again. Now John Cooney waiting for it. Gets it out uh, and a good run there from Rhea. Now Billy Burns, they've got numbers on the outside. Here's a chance. It's Stuart Moore again. And I think Stuart Moore have, have knocked it on over the try line though. But uh, the try has been awarded by... Uh, by the referee, but they are going to go upstairs for this one. And uh, Ulster definitely looking the better of the two at the moment. 
Well, well, well. Again, not many penalties, only mistakes, says Eric Davison. And then uh, who's more attacking? So it's definitely Ulster who's spreading the ball more wide, but it just feels like Munster is gaining more ground through the, the phases. But when the uh, Ulster side starts to move things wide, they do look very dangerous. They're first going to look for a forward pass then, and then uh, secondly, they're going to check the grounding of the try, which I personally think he might have knocked that ball on over the try line. So let's have a look. Downward pressure. Well, they could, you could argue and say that uh, there was enough downward pressure on that ball. Let's have a look. No, that's a knock, surely. The try cannot be awarded from that angle. From the, the last angle that I saw, there was separation of the arm and the ball, and that should be a knock on over the try line. And what an opportunity uh, wasted in for Ulster if they, if they don't get this try. Great defense from Kefels if this try is not going to be allowed. So Jakub is discussing it with the TMO at the moment, and I think it's going to be a knock-on. Let's have a look what happens. But with eight minutes to go, this is a big moment in this game. A big moment in this game coming up now. Oh, the try has been awarded. So uh, I might have been watching a different replay then. So the try has been awarded to Ulster, and it's 19 points to seven with a conversion to come. Big call from the TMO. I personally felt that there was separation of the arm and the ball, but regardless, the try has been awarded, and Ulster gets their third try of this game, and have been awarded for clinical play in this game. Just everything that they've done, they've done to perfection so far. Munster, on the other hand, has had plenty of opportunities, just uh, not rounding it off at the moment. Right, 19 to 7 with a conversion to come from the corner. John Cooney now lining this one up. And uh, that strike is going to be pulled to the left. So the score is going to be 19 points to 7 going into the last six and a half minutes of this first half. Right. Big moments in this game, and it's uh, Ulster who is dominating this affair at the moment. Great work from them. Right, the restart now from uh, Munster again. This time taken by Dwayne Vermeulen from the 22-meter line. He's just going to set it up just over Jean Klein. Got him covered. And uh, a penalty goes the way of Ulster. High tackle from Jean Klein on Dwayne Vermeulen. Uh, Eric Davison, were they on the advantage? Ulster said they weren't on the advantage, um, but uh, they had a really good uh, attack going. So they got the try in the end. Uh, D. Rousseau says, right, too much right. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so uh, that one is kicked into touch, and uh, it's an opportunity again for Ulster to go on the attack. Line out on a 10 meter line inside the uh, Munster's half. Throwing's gonna come from uh, Rob Herring now. Rob Herring finds his jumper. The mall not set up, but there was interference in the line out. So another penalty to Ulster on the 10 meter line inside Munster's half. Munster is throwing this game away now. Alfie Pizzer said, die ball is dalk nie voor en toe nie, die rek af is nie aanslaan Yeah, it's a tough one, it's a tough one. Um, different, different ref, different outcome maybe on the day, but it is what it is. So line up now to Ulster, five meters out from the, from the Munster try line. And another try could just as well seal this game. It's the quarterfinal, and it should be a, a very tight affair. So a lead like that going into halftime will surely basically settle this game for Ulster. Here comes the driving ball now from uh, 
from Ulster. They are starting to move forward now. Herring controlling that ball at the back. Now it goes down. It is uh, Ulster in possession right on the right-hand corner. It is the Fords taking it up. And uh, Peter Omani struggling to roll away. Now it's O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan about seven meters out. John Cooney to Rob Herring. Rob Herring brought down now. A quick ball again for Ulster. Just a little bit uh, too in a hurry there. Losing that ball backwards is Ulster and also losing ground. Now John Cooney again. Out it comes to number four. Lock sets it up. Now John Cooney again out to Tom O'Toole. Tom O'Toole sets it up nicely. Now George Cooney. Back it comes now to Hume. Hume tries to cut through the defense, but Damien Dielendi's got him covered. Still about 10 meters out right in the middle of the field. Slow ball coming back for them now. It's uh, taken up by Rhea. Now Cooney again out to McCloskey. Sets it up through uh, Moore. Now Cooney again. It's taken up by the forwards of Alston. Now still about 15 meters out. Going backwards at the moment is uh, Ulster. Slow ball coming back again now. Billy Burns out to Hume. Cut a pass to Delacun. Delacun now is about 10 meters out, but penalized there is Ulster. They're coming in from the side, diving off the ball and uh, or diving uh, off their feet. And it's going to be a penalty to Munster now. So Munster survives this onslaught from Ulster. And, uh, yeah, it's it's been one of those games. Carper Peach says, hi, old man. I'm not an old man. Come on. <laughs> and then uh, Andrew Bieker says, Stormers are capable to beat any European team. And then Carper Peach says, come on, Ulster. Right, so that ball not kicked out. And here comes Ulster again from the 10-meter line inside Munster's half. So disappointing from Munster at the moment. McElroy takes it up. Good defense. Oh, the ball might be stolen. Notes comes back to Ulster's side again. Now there's a little knock on from McCloskey. Gets the ball out. Now Conway on the attack. Puts a kick in behind. Here comes the chase from Conway. Chasing back after it is uh, the captain Henderson. Five meters from his own trial and he picks it up and sets up another uh, ruck here for Ulster. Two minutes to go in this first half. Cooney now working it with the forwards. Slow ball coming back now for Ulster. Just uh, trying to uh, settle things down a little bit is Cooney. He goes uh, with a box kick over the top himself, trying to find touch. And uh, he's going to find it right about five meters outside of the 22. <laughs> Slim Slayer can't believe that Ulster has scored three tries already. They've definitely been the better side in this first half. Like I say, Munster have had plenty of opportunities. But uh, little unforced errors at the moment, costing Munster dearly. And uh, Ulster have been clinical in every move that they've made up until this point where they've slipped up now. Sim Slayer says Ulster is becoming scary. Yeah, fact is, if uh, Ulster win this game and the Stormers win, Ulster's going to have to come back to Cape Town for that grudge match. Who will forget about that uh, game in the final minutes when, uh, when when Ulster, well, I think still personally won that game. But yeah, that left there, they will definitely be licking their fingers if uh, they can set up a return semi-final against the Stormers in Cape Town. Right, Scannell with the throw in here, right on the 22 meter line. A big line out for Munster. They need to strike before half time. There's a minute of this first half left. Scale with a throw in, finds his jumper. Was that skew or not? Yeah, it's not in straight. And Munster, again, just the basics not been done correctly by the, the Munster side. And Scannell complaining to Yaku Paper, but even myself could see it from this angle that it wasn't in straight. Mild skew. Right, so 30 seconds to go. It's going to be a scrum down to Ulster now. And they'll probably just want to set this uh, scrum alight and uh, kick this ball into Dutch for the end of this first half. 
Right, scrum down to uh, Ulster. Time is up on the clock here for the first half. 19 to 7 as uh, Ulster will be looking just to clear this ball into touch from the scrum. Looking good for Ulster. The men in white defeating the men in red today. Or at least for the first half, that is. Another solid scrum. John Cooney gets it out to McElroy, who will put it into touch. And that will be half time. So 19 points to 7 lead here for Ulster. Going into a half time break in a quarter final, Munster will have to score first in that second half if they want any chance of coming back into this game. I'm going to take a quick break. But don't go anywhere. When I do come back, we will be doing the second half.
Right, we are back here for the second half, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I personally uh, have got a lot to say about the Ulster try. I don't think that was a try, even. Uh, there was definitely separation of the arm and the ball, and according to the rules, that should have been a knock on. But by the way, it is uh, Ulster dominating this first half, and it's been really good. Stuart Moore has come in for uh, for the uh, star player, and uh, he's done exceptionally well at the back. Um, Robert Balakuni has uh, made a try-saving tackle and and really did well in that first half. Uh, James Hume and Stuart McCloskey just setting it up nicely for this Ulster side at the moment, being front football and just uh, doing the hard yards. Then uh, Billy Burns and John Cooney has been playing really well at 9 and 10, just uh, dictating the way the flow of this game is going to go. And uh, yeah, it's controversy after controversy. That first try scored by Ulster as well, um, by John Cooney. There was a scuffle in the background, around eight players out of the match. That shouldn't have been taken quickly. The referee should have uh, put that game under control. First, uh, stop the fight or the scuffle and then gave the penalty. But regardless, two very opportunistic tries by Ulster has put them well in place to reach the semi-finals. Fort Weiss, Andrew Warwick uh, being replaced early on in that game by O'Sullivan. Then Rob Herring is having a decent game. Tom O'Toole is doing well. Ian Henderson is having a massive game as captain of the Ulster side. Alan O'Connor doing good work. Marcus Rea, Nick Dimoni, and Wayne from Yellen neutralizing uh, Peter Omani and Gavin Coombs at the moment. For the uh, monster side, Mike, Mike Haley, we haven't seen too much of him. Andrew Conway and Keith Olds are trying valiantly. Chris Farrell and Damien Dialendi has had a couple of good runs in that first half as well. Joey Carberry and Conor Murray trying uh, valiantly as well, although I do feel that John Cooney and Billy Burns have outplayed them in that first half. Sports wise, Josh... Uh, Wickerly, Neil Scannell, and Stephen Archer has been solid. John Klein and uh, Benin Wickerly has also put in a few good yards. Peter Omani, Alex Kindelin, and Gavin Coombs have had very little to say in that first half as far as taking the game up front. So it's a very tight game, and it's a very good game to watch. Um, not a lot of uh, mistakes, uh, little knock-ons here and there from Munster. Just unable to uh, get things going for them. But Ulster has made it worth the watch so far in this uh, quarterfinal clash. And uh, like I said, I think Munster should be the first team to score in the second half. Otherwise, uh, this game is going to run away from them here in the second half. And they don't need a penalty. They're going to need a try to get back into this. Uh, I don't think a penalty will uh, put them back into the game with the way Ulster is playing at the moment. They've just been phenomenal and uh, getting over that front tremendously at the moment. So uh, that's the difference between the two sides at the moment. Ulster using their opportunity, although even uh, controversial at times, the decisions by the referee and the TMO, um, I still believe that Ulster has been the far better side between the two sides so far anyway. So... Uh, Great work from them, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the second half. You guys can help support the channel as well by clicking on that subscribe button. You can also become a member by clicking on the join button. It starts as low as one pound uh, for the European, for the UK people, and then uh, about twenty rand is the lowest membership for uh, the South Africans. So uh, if you support the channel, show your support. It is tough uh, being a rough YouTuber, YouTube as well. So uh, show your support. Uh, if you don't want to spend money, just click on that subscribe button and press the like button as well to show your support for this channel as we are going to go into the second half of this game between Ulster and Munster. And it's been uh, a really good performance from Ulster. Let's see if I can get some statistics up here. I'm just not sure if they got any uh, statistics going on at the moment. So match summary, no, that's the only thing that they've got so far for us. So it was a try by John Cooney in the 10th minute. 
a big scuffle went on in the background. Referee allowed him to play on, and John Cooney scored. Then Jean Klein got a try, which was also controversial in the sense that uh, there might have been a little knock on from him. But after watching the replay, one could feel that uh, he did recollect that ball and scored the try. Conversion by Carvery, then the try by Moore, and then uh, converted by John Cooney, and then another try by Stuart Moore again. So uh, things have gone the way of Ulster in this uh, first half. And the second half is going to be full throttle here. Can Munster come back? That's the big question as both teams are now back onto the field for the start of the second half. And Ulster is halfway through. Another 40 like this, and they've got their places booked in the uh, semi-final of this competition. Who do you think is going to win? Let me know in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are on that first half so far. Do you agree with me on a decision so far, or do you disagree? But either way, it's not going to change what is happening on the scoreboard. It is 19 to 7, and uh, Munster will restart this game playing from right to left on my screen. So uh, it's Joey Carberry to get the second half underway for us in a, a fantastic game so far between the two sides. Right, 40 minutes left in this one as Joey Carberry gets this game back underway for us. A deep kick in from him, collected by Dwayne Vermeulen inside the 22. He sets it up nicely for Ulster. John Cooney waiting for it, just slowing it down and... Uh, Picking the pace himself is Ulster at the moment. Slow ball coming back. John Cooney waiting for it. He's going to go with the box kick over the top. It slices a little bit off the boot. Not going to get the distance what he wanted. But Della Kuhn has uh, collected it again for Ulster just outside the 22. Now they set it up for Ian Henderson. Right just outside the 22 in the middle of the field. John Cooney now gets it back to Billy Burns. Back to McCloskey who straightens the line for them. But the defense from uh, Gavin Coombs, phenomenal there, just pushing him back inside the 22 now. Tom O'Toole. Tom O'Toole, has he lost that ball backwards? Yes, he has. And it's going to be a penalty to Ulster there. Uh, offside from uh, Munster. So Ulster will be able to relieve some pressure here. Just uh, patience is the key now for Ulster in the second half. They are playing at their own pace. They uh, are determining what pace they're playing this game on at the moment. Billy Burns with a kick downfield, and he's going to find touch round right about on halfway. Great work from Ulster. They've survived the onslaught from Munster early on in the second half, and about a minute and a half in the second half. Time is ticking, tick tock. Ulster leading by 19 to 7. Rob Herring with a throw in to this line out. To the front they go. Now John Cooney gets it out to Billy Burns. Billy Burns to McCloskey. Oh, beautiful breakout from him. Into space. Gets the pass back inside to uh, Timoni. And Timoni's going to score. And that should wrap it up. A fourth try for Ulster. As Timoni gets over for the fourth try of uh, Ulster. And that should wrap it up, surely. No way back from here for Munster. A great try from Ulster and uh, a great breakout from Hume. An absolutely beautiful flat pass to Hume who ran into, into the gap. Tremendous pass from McCloskey. Just cutting that defense to pieces. The inside pass to Timoni who gets over for the fourth try for Ulster and a brilliant team try from them. Munster has got no answer. Well, well, well. 24 points to 7 with a conversion to come right in front. 24 points to 7 with the conversion to come. John Cooney can take his time with this one. Three minutes into the second half and Ulster well and truly ahead now. The Kings fan will celebrate if they win today, which is, well, just 37 minutes away from a really good victory over Munster today. This is one of those derbies, the uh, Irish derby, and what's supposed to be a close heart for battle is becoming a runaway game for Ulster at the moment. 
Black one goes over. So 26 points to seven it is after just three and a half minutes into the second half. Munster has got absolutely no answer to this Ulster attack at the moment. Just ripping that defense to pieces. And it's going to take something absolutely special from Munster to get back in this game. We've seen the, the Curry Cup clash earlier today between the Crickwists and the Western Province where Crickwists came back from a massive deficit. So let's see if Munster can do the same. They've got the ball from the kickoff and it's the lady who puts a little stab through. But Hume is back for it five minutes from his own trial line to collect that for Ulster. And uh, now just controlled there by, uh, by Alan O'Connor. Good work again from Ulster. As I just control this ball at the back, John Cooney waiting for it. He's going to go with the box kick over the top himself. Surely looking for touch here. Oh, it's been charged down. And it's a try to Kevin Humes. That is a big moment for Munster as they hit back immediately. So it's not over just yet as Gavin Coombs, the number eight of uh, the Munster side, gets the try for Munster. Great uh, work. You saw it coming all day long. The charge down on John Cooney and then just uh, a brilliant try from uh, Gavin Coombs. Great work done from the number eight of Munster. Here's the youngster everybody is talking about at the moment. So they are having another look at this, I think, just to see the grounding of uh, that ball from Gavin Coombs. And oh, that's also, I think, a knock on. So, also uh, a little bit of separation there from the elbow on the grounding of the ball. So, I mean, I don't think the try is going to be awarded. I think it's going to be disallowed. And uh, this is very similar to what happened to that first half try from uh, Stuart Moore. So, this is just, well, maybe he will take a little bit more clearer. There it comes off the elbow, separation of the uh, ball and the elbow, and then he darts it down. That shouldn't be a try. I'm sorry. So if they award this try, I think uh, we will be even on that uh, first half try from Ulster. They are taking their time evaluating to see whether this is a try or not, but... Uh, I personally would give the try, but I don't think now it's going to be disallowed. So, no try. It's a knock on from Kevin Coons. That is so, so rubbish. If uh, you look at that first half try from Stephen Moore and you now, or from Stuart Moore, and now you look at this one, it's similar in every fashion. So, try has been disallowed, and it's going to be 26 points to seven. Let's just see. Uh, what the referee decides here, it's going to be a goal line dropout for Ulster. So another big moment in this game then, going against Munster again. The drop, the goal line dropout from Billy Burns, collected there by uh, Haley. now gets it up. He has a chance for Farrell. Farrell sets it up. A couple of replacements on the field now for uh, Munster as well. I think uh, so onto the field came Ben Healy. Uh, no, great Casey's on the field for Munster as well. So here they come now. Keefels on the charge, trying to uh, make his way forward. Just short of the 22 penalty advantage coming now for uh, Munster. Casey wants to go quickly, but the referee stops him. Again, inconsistent referee from Yaku Paper. He loves a first or a second minute try to John Cooney while eight players are up against it, but he stops Casey from going quickly because he wants to say something. Ridiculous. But anyway, six minutes into the second half, 26 points to seven it is. And a penalty two months to now, just outside the 22. Also on the field is Ben Healy for uh, Munster. He's going to take the kick to the corner as he sets it up, run about five meters out from the try line. Munster will have to score now 
if they want any chance of still winning this game. Remember, the scoreboard is 26 points to 7. The try was disallowed by Gavin Coombs. Seven minutes into the second half. Now Scannell with the throw in. Goes to the front to Jean Klein. The mall has been set up here by Munster. Can they get this mall driving forward? Slowly but surely. Use it one or use it once, says the referee. So uh, they're gonna have to get this one out. Casey waiting for it. Casey needs to get this one out. It comes to Dia Lendi, who uh, sets it up now. Casey again. Out it comes to Jean Klein. He's just two meters short now. Casey's going to have a dart himself. Did he get over? No, he's just short. Just inches short of the try line. Another pick up and go from Munster. And uh, held up again, just short of the try line. Now, patience required from Munster. Pick and go, just short again. Now it's uh, another charge this time. Again, short, and it's knocked on by Munster. So that is going to be a big one. Neil Scannell has knocked that ball on, and uh, it's going to be a scrum down to Ulster. Well, big moments like this is going to get the game. Megan Basson says it is uh, 26 12. So the try was disallowed, Megan. So uh, we're waiting on Flash Court to correct it for us. But at the moment, it's 26 points to seven, and there was a knock on. Terminus says, What is the TMO on? At least two non tries were given to both sides, as for Yaku. Uh, Terminus says, uh, Tim Timoni is some unit. Yep, absolutely, beast of a player. So I'm not sure when they're going to correct the score, but it is 26 points to seven at the moment. Nine minutes played in the second half. Right, Ulster off the back gets it out to Billy Burns and a penalty to Ulster as well. Offside by Munster and a discipline letting them down. It just shows you how uh, things can turn against you on the day. A couple of things going horribly wrong for Munster in this game so far. And Ulster is just uh, living off that mistakes at the moment. Billy Burns with a kick downfield, and uh, he's going to find touch on the, well, between the 10 and the 22 of, my, of Ulster. Another chance now for Ulster to get out of their own half. His hands was on the ball, so that means the ball is out. With all reason, you're, you're allowed to play that ball. Again, the wrong decision from Yaku. I'm sorry, he's having a terrible game as referee today. Right, so the throw-in taken by uh, Ulster now, and they set up a driving mall. Controlled at the back by Rob Herring. And uh, Becky says, what a sad start for Munster. Absolutely. Right, so a big uh, counter mall from Munster, but uh, they do get it out in the end as Ulster as they get the kick ahead. Now here's a chance for Haley. Haley with a bit of space gets the pass out. Here's a breakout from uh, Carberry, gets the pass. Oh, it's another knock on from Munster on the 10 meter line inside Ulster's half. And everything is just going wrong for this team today. Megan Basson says, Can Sharks in tomorrow, my man? Uh, yeah, that's one that's going to be a big one Sharks versus Bulls. And uh, I'm hoping for a miracle, to be quite honest, from a Sharks perspective, you know. We've got the players. Uh, players, we don't have any shortage of. It's uh, the coaching staff that I'm a little bit worried about and the fact that we've got Kevin Bosch at fly off. But maybe he, show, he proves us wrong and has the best game of his life, along with Sean Everett uh, getting the planning right for the shark side. But all, all roads lead to a lock this victory tomorrow as well. Right, George Cooney now to feed this ball in for Ulster. Run about on the 10-meter line. In the middle of the field here for Ulster. Big scrum coming from Munster trying to disrupt them. And they win the penalty from that scrum. And uh, a really good scrum from uh, Munster on that occasion. Barry Green says they should be called on. Knock on Munster. This is getting out of hand. Yeah, so every opportunity has gone to waste for this Munster side today. 
Casey tried to go quickly, and uh, it's not working out for Munster today as the referee's calling them back. John Cooney not looking good at the moment. Put on Doak. Uh, Doak has been really good for Ulster throughout the season. Right, so Healy now with the kick to the corner again for Munster. And he finds Stutch run about five meters out from the try line. Is uh, John Cooney leaving the field or is he still on? We've got uh, 28 minutes to play in this game. Can Munster find a way back in this game? Right, Scannell is going to throw this one in. Replacement on for uh, Munster as well. Jeremy Lawman. Lawfman is on for them as well. Fido Marnie takes the line out, and here comes the driving ball from Munster now. They're starting to move forward here, and Scannell controlling this ball at the back. Can they get the momentum penalty uh, to a uh, penalty advantage to Munster? Still they come, and Scannell is trying to control this ball. Is he going to be able to get over the try line? No, he can't. The ball has been put down. Now Casey gets it out to Klein again. Klein just a meter short. Great defense from Ulster. Now they get it out. Oh, it's a miracle try from uh, Kiefel. Surely he is in for the try. I think he's done brilliantly to get into that corner. And uh, Jakob Paper is going to go upstairs for this one anyway. The Dutch judge says he's happy, but uh, Yaku still wants to go upstairs. Tian Brunewald says, come on, Ulster. So let's have a look here. Brilliant try. Perfect uh, placement from Key Falls. And that just shows you what experience can do. Brilliant stuff there from them. And uh, not into touch, surely not. And that's a brilliant one-handed touchdown from Kiefels in the corner for uh, Munster's second try of this game. They don't even have to waste time on this one. Try has been awarded. So 26 points to 12 with the conversion to come. 27 minutes to play in this quarterfinal. Joey Carberry with a very difficult kick coming up for him. He's not uh, known for, the, for his goal-kicking uh, ability, really is Joey Carberry. That one nearly curling in. It's gone to the right of the post. So the score will remain 26 points to 12 with uh, 26 and a half minutes to go. Will we uh, see the uh, side back in this game? Tian Grunewald says, keep on the good work, man. Thanks, uh, Tian. Really appreciate it, man. Right, so the restart from Ulster then, 26 points to 12 it is at the moment. Ulster have won that ball from the kickoff, and uh, they knock it on, unfortunately. So we're coming back for two knock-ons, first from Munster and then from Ulster. So it will be an Ulster scrum down right on the 22-meter line. Well, well, well. Yeah, Delacoon has been uh, a thorn in the, in the Munster side today, just uh, keeping up the pressure against this monster side at the moment. 26 points to 12, scrum down to Ulster, five meters outside of the 22, about 20 meters from the right and touch line. 25 minutes to go in this uh, first quarter final of the URC. Barry says we're gonna see a knock on next guru from Munster. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, Ulster's got the ball, so they're gonna feed this one in, but. I'm guessing the next time Munster get it, they will knock it on. We'll see. Right, Cooney off the back to Della Coon. Della Coon up over the 22-meter line, right in the middle of the field. That ball is out. Great work from Casey, putting the pressure on Cooney. And Munster's won this ball back. But it's going to be a penalty for holding on from Casey. A big penalty now to Ulster, right in front. And uh, they should easily get a three-pointer from this one. John Cooney is going to have a shot at goal. So 26 can now become 29. And uh, it puts them right back into the driving seat here. So uh, what are they waiting for now? Yeah, they have signaled that they are going to have a shot at goal. So uh, 
26 points to 12, and a very, very, very easy kick coming up for John Cooney. Casey did phenomenally well to steal that ball initially, and then uh, he got pinned for holding on. Can you believe it? Yeah, great work there from uh, Ian Henderson, who's been a standout performer for this uh, Ulster side today. 24 minutes to go. John Cooney to put Ulster into the lead by 17 points now. That should be enough with 24 minutes to go, surely. Right, John Cooney just taking his time with this one, knowing that he's got plenty of time to take this kick as well. Gets it easily, and it's 29 points to 12. Ulster leading this uh, first quarter final. Right, Monster need two converted tries and a penalty to draw level. Three converted tries to win it. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. We've got 23 and a half minutes, well, 23 minutes to go. Rugby have delivered up stranger things in the past. Right, you need to get this game back underway for Munster. High hanging kickoff. Doak now on for Cooney as well for Ulster. That restart is going to be collected by uh, Munster. And wait for it, Barry. It's a knock on from Munster. <laughs> so a knock on from that kickoff from Munster is going to give the scrum to Ulster. So 22 and a half minutes to go, 29 points to 12, scrum down to Ulster, right on the 22 meter line in the middle of the field. So definitely handling errors being the difference between the two sides when it comes to momentum and consistency in throughout this first quarter final. Munster has knocked on the opportunity to win this game, really. They've knocked on so many times throughout this game right so doak to feed this ball now from ulster right from the 22 in the middle middle of the field <laughs> barry says i stand corrected right doak off the back and uh, the kick downfield from ulster not going to find touch into the hands of uh, Carberry. now he's going to go high up into the air chase down his own kick and uh well, he's collected himself as joey carberry he's done phenomenally well on that occasion but will he be pinned for holding on no he won't so the ball comes back for munster now an opportunity if they go out wide yes the alendi the alendi cuts back inside running sideways rather than forward now tackle by uh, Timoni. now casey gets it out and another knock on from coons well well, well. Knock on after knock on after knock on from Munster. Pressure from Ulster's defense causing all these problems for Munster at the moment. Just the moment Munster looked like they're going to start getting momentum forward, they knocked the ball on. Yeah, to be quite honest, I don't think uh, Munster deserve here to uh, win this game at all. I think Ulster deserve it. Just by the way that they've played throughout this game. But you never know. I mean, look at the earlier game. Western Province deserved to win that game up until the 20, up until the 60th minute mark. So uh, unless Munster can turn things around in the last 20 minutes of this game, Ulster will go through to the semi-final. Barry asking, where is Achilles, Mr. LAL? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where Achilles are. He's... Uh, He's getting spiritually uh, ready for tomorrow's uh, big game at Loftus. You know, uh, uh, I don't know if he's uh, if he's uh, got something in that crystal ball of his, seeing that the Sharks might beat the Bulls, so he's going to stay away then. But uh, either way, it's a fantastic performance from Ulster today and a really poor performance from Munster, which has led. Ulster to lead by 17 points going into the last 20 minutes of this game. Right, so it's Doak to feed the scrum here for Ulster. 21 minutes to go. Yaku Paper, absolutely disappointing as a referee today. Right, Doak feeds that ball in and at the back, Timoni takes it off. 
Now it's uh, McCloskey. Billy Burns on the loop around. Gets the pass out to you. Who cuts back inside. Just uh, short of the halfway line. It's been ripped by Munster. And great work there done by Munster. Now, can they get some uh, go for a ball? Oh, it's another knock on this time from the Alenian. You has picked it up. Now, just five meters outside of the 22. Doha gets it up. Now, McElroy out to Herring. Herring up to the 22 meter line. Five meters from the left hand touch line. It's been uh, counterrupted by uh, Munster, but somehow they do get it back as uh, Ulster. Domo Tool sets it up. Now Doha gets it back again to McElroy. McElroy is going to straighten the line. Now Doha again working it with the forwards. Sets it up again for them. And uh, interference from Munster off their feet. But Rippy says play on. Now Ian Henderson out to Timoni. Timoni still going. Timoni still going. 10 meters out from the try line. Now quick ball Billy Burns. The pass out to Hume. And Hume has cut through the defense. Has he got the ball down? I think, yes, he has. And it should be a try to Ulster again. The try has been awarded by Yoko Paper, and that should seal the game. That has got to seal the game for Ulster now. 34 points to 12 with uh, 19 minutes to play. Sim Slayer says, I'm a Bulls supporter, and I don't believe the media favoring us for the win. Well, Really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the media say. Some, uh, uh, if you really want to get, uh, uh, well, how can I put it, An accurate uh, prediction, go and look what the bookies are saying for tomorrow's game. The odds are stacked against the Sharks. Barry says, how bad is that monster knock on? But this time, from a Springbok, absolutely. It's even worse coming from uh, the Alendi as well. So 34 points to 12 it is now. And Ulster have definitely wrapped this up, surely. With uh, about 18 minutes to play. It's a uh, game set and match here for Ulster, surely. Doak now trying to convert this one for them as well. And uh, just putting the final nail in the coffin as it goes up to 36 points to 12 with 18 minutes to play. This has been a ride from uh, Ulster today. Great breakout from Hume, and he just his momentum just takes him over for the try. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant from Ulster. 36 points to 12, and uh, the game pretty much in the back here. Something have to go terribly wrong in order for Ulster to lose this one. They've, come, they've got the ball inside the 22 now. And Doak now gets the ball out to Ian Henderson, who just sets it up again now. Doak again, working it with the forwards. But uh, another penalty coming against Munster now. Four offside. So, some Slayer says, uh, congratulations to Ulster, I guess. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think there's any way uh, Munster's going to get back into this game. Another penalty to Ulster now. From the 22. Uh, you see now, Barry, you're starting with your nonsense again. Maybe a Kevin Bosch special uh, when they play Bulls. No. Remember what? Look, I've got nothing against Kevin Bosch. Uh, he was a really good player at a time, but to be honest, he's just not international quality. I mean, he's shown it time and time again, over and over in the big matches, he loses his head. He loses his cool and he loses the game. So uh, I will never forgive him for that. Uh, was it the uh, Super Rugby final uh, for South Africa or was it the K Cup final where he absolutely destructed and lost us the game single handedly? And here comes Alster again through Delacun. Delacun up to the 22 meter line now needs support. He's still going. He's about 10 meters out, is Delacun. Delacun still going and now brought down. And uh, will that ball come back for Ulster? Again, the wrong decision from Yaku Paper. His uh, knees touched the ground, so they had to release the player, which Munster didn't do. And uh, yeah, that should have been that should have been uh, uh, well should have been a penalty to Ulster. To be quite honest, there. 
Alstar on the attack, Delacun on the attack, he went in. Let's have another look at this. So there his knee touches the ground. There they're supposed to leave him. They didn't release the player. That should be a penalty to Alstar. Instead, it's a part of the scrum to Munster. How poor can a referee blow the whistle on a day? 15 minutes left in this one. And uh, Casey now to feed this one for Munster. Right, so five meters from their own try line is Munster now. And the referee gives a penalty to Munster. Just shows you again how decision after decision can make this game a really good game into a laughing stock. Yeah, God for Pete says, totally agree. Uh, Barry says, you're starting with your nonsense again. <laughs> yeah, Barry, very funny. Uh, Leslie van der Skeef says, the like that kind of final vs. Ulster versus Leinster. Well, I'm hoping not. Um, I'm hoping for at least a, a South African team in the final, you know? Let's, uh, let's try our best to get a South African team in the final. Our best bet is the Stormers at this stage, but you never know. Uh, we might just end up uh, upsetting a really big team. Right, here comes Munster now from the 22. Farrell takes it up through the middle. Now Casey again. Quick ball again through the hands they go. It's Munster trying to make a bit of ground. Healy brought down between the 10 and the 22. Still they come here. Lendy gets the pass out to uh, Conway. Conway driven back in the tackle. And a big counter ruck here from Ulster, but the referee penalizes Ulster again, this time rightfully so. So another penalty now to Munster, five meters outside of the 22. 14 minutes to go, 36 points to 12. And uh, Healy looking to kick this downfield. Megan Basson says uh, Sharks versus Stormers final in Cape Town. How brilliant would that not be? Uh, Barry says maybe that special one will uh, win us the game. What do you say about that if that happens? Then I'll swallow my words, uh, Barry, but uh, I don't. I doubt that it's going to be the case. You know, uh, it's either you've got a uh, big match temperament or you don't have it. And uh, I personally don't think he's got it. Dwayne Vermeulen wins the line out from the monster throwing and an easy steal, as you can just see that... Uh, the momentum is going the way of Ulster, but it might have been a little knock on from Ulster as well. So uh, it will be a scrum down to Munster. Dian Grunewald says, do you believe it's over for Munster? Absolutely, uh, Dian. I don't think there's any way back for him. With 13 minutes to play, 36 points to 12, it's just a, a bridge too far, mountain too high, you know? Billy Burns leave the field as Madigan comes on to the field. Billy Burns were really good today as well for Ulster. Right, Madigan on. Barry says, put that Chamberlain, Scott, what it take? Absolutely, I believe uh, he's still a youngster, but uh, he, will, he will turn into a very, very good fly-off in the future, I believe. Dwayne Vermeulen picks it up off the back. Dowak now. McCloskey straightening the line is you nearly into the gap again. Now it's uh, Madigan out wide. They go. Oh, Stuart Moore have been uh, caught behind the advantage line there by Damien Dialendi. Now it's uh, taken up again by Ulster. Just playing to the uh, occasion here is Ulster just trying to slow down the pace of the game again. Joak now waiting for it. He's going to go with the box kick over the top. So here comes the chase from uh, Balakuni. But it's uh, Joey Carberry who takes that ball now, looking for a bit of space. Gets it out to uh, to uh, Haley. Now it's uh, Casey again to Healy. Healy running <laughs> sideways forward, sideways backwards, trying to find a bit of space, but not finding it. Now wide they go. Now there's a bit of space opening up for him. To uh, Kefal, steps back inside onto the 10 meter line of Ulster. Still trying to work it through. Now there's a, a gap opening up for them. Beautiful run here from, from Munster. They're just 15 meters out from the try line now. Quick ball coming back now. KC out wide. They go Thielendi. Thielendi gets it out to the replacement hooker. 
That's back inside five meters out from the try line is Munster now. Still coming now with their uh, forwards as uh, Munster just trying to work it. Jason Jenkins nearly made it up, but they've been driven backwards again as Munster 10 meters out from the try line. Now it's taken up by Barron. Barron making a couple of meters now, seven meters out. Casey again gets it off to uh, Jason Jenkins again. Now Casey tries to snap, goes on his own, can't get there. Another pick up and go this time from uh, Jerry Lofman. Another pick up and go from the forwards, just trying to get five meters out. Here comes another drive this time from Kendallin. Kendallin just short about three meters from the try line. Another pick up and go from the forwards, just two meters out from the try line. Right under the post at the moment is uh, Munster. Now it's uh, taken up by Baron. Oh, he's just a meter short. Now Casey, back it comes to Keefels, and he gets in for his second try. So Munster do get another try with 10 minutes to play in this game. Will we see another comeback? Sim Slayer says, I feel Manny Lovok is overrated. Storm has happened to create dozens of opportunities for penalty kicks. Uh, Lovok can't score unfavorable penalty kicks and conversions. And then have you seen fly off for lines? Jordan Hendricks uh, play for the Blitzbox Sevens now. Yeah, another another bright future for uh, Jordan Hendricks as well. Um, if uh, used correctly, he could make the step up in the future as well. And then uh, some say, who's your who's player of the season in the URC? Uh, my pick are Vincent Fassi or Marcel. So no. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn from you on this occasion, Sim, and I'm gonna say my player of the season is gonna be the number eight of the Stormers, uh, Jefan Ruiz, because uh, he's had a phenomenal season, an absolutely uh, star in the making for South Africa. But Vincent Tuchuka not far off, and then uh, I don't think uh, Fassi has been that brilliant. I know Marcel has been pretty good, and then also Rua Nokia of uh, the balls the lock forward has been quite phenomenal if you if you're looking for a south african player of the season but if on the very close to uh, player of the season in the urc this year right so about eight minutes to go it's 36 points to 17 as that conversion was missed from carberry as well and from that restart uh, let's see what happened there. So that ball has gone into touch, it looks like, and it's going to be a line out to Ulster from the 22 meter line of Munster. Right. Uh, Leslie van der Skeef says, Damien Vince says, out for the season. I'm a big Stormers fan, but the factory is quite big. Yes, but Damien Vince is going to be out for the rest of the season. So uh, that's a big blow to the Springboks and the Stormers, where he's been really in phenomenal. Uh, um form for the storms as well at inside center but let's hope uh rickas pretorius or dan duplessis can step up for that game lb says david i've missed the whole game and in any bulls game uh, fans going to the game tomorrow awesome right here comes ulster again from the 22 doha waiting for this ball to come back it's uh taken up beautifully now by the four it's just about 15 meters out now from the try line Skier and Treadwell who took it up for Ulster. Now gets it back. Now here's another run from Ian Madigan. Now Tom O'Toole sets it up for Ulster. Can they finish this game off? Seven minutes to go. Now it's taken up by uh, Kieran Treadwell again. Comes back to Doak. Just uh, about 15 meters out from the try line is Ulster. Still working it with uh, Jeremy, well, not Jeremy Lofton, Erica Sullivan. Penalty to uh, Munster. Diving off their feet is the call from uh, the referee. And he gives another extra 10 meters for Tom O'Toole not releasing that ball on the ground. Slowing the game down. So Healy can now kick this downfield for Munster. 36 points to 17 it is at the moment. That kick is going to find touch run about on the 10 meter line inside Ulster's half. Six and a half minutes to go in this one. And uh, Ulster could be the first team to book their place in the semifinals of the URC. I think they've done enough to uh, win this game today. 
Munster has just been rueful at times. Right, KC to Healy. He throws a little dummy, tries to go on his own there. Now KC again. Out it comes to uh, to a Peter O'Mahony who took it up for him. Now KC oh, they knocked that ball backwards as uh, Munster this time. But it's been turned over by Ulster. But the referee is going to call them back. And uh, let's see what the reason for that is. So he's blowing for a player who stayed down. So it's uh, Baron who's going to receive some attention. Again, I don't think it warranted uh, for them to uh, stop the game right there. I don't know. But it's not looking good for, uh, for Munster. You can see that they're not the team that they were a couple, of, well, a season or two back. Uh, there was a time that uh, Munster was really competitive with uh, Leinster, and this season has just not been the case. I mean, Jan van Graan finishing his term as, as coach of the side, uh, that could have had an influence on it as well. I think Munster is very similar to where the Sharks are finding themselves. They've got the players, but... Uh, I just don't think, uh, look, Johan van Graan is a brilliant coach, don't get me wrong, but the fact that he's leaving Munster could have influenced the players a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, it is uh, what it is. Uh, Tian Grunewald says, thanks for the stream. I need to go to sleep now playing school boy rugby tomorrow. Good luck with that, Tian. And then... Uh, Some slayer says Super Sport does not replay URC matches. They mostly replay uh, Super Rugby matches. You're not quite sure, some, uh, but uh, I mean, you can go and watch the highlights on uh, on YouTube on the URC uh, with our YouTube channel a little bit later in the week. I guess they're going to put it up. Right, so Casey to uh, feed the scrum here for Munster. There's five minutes left of this game, and it's safe to say that Ulster has booked their place in the semi final. Right, Casey gets it up, and yes, one more dart from uh, Carberry out to Dia Lendi again. Fends off uh, Hume, 10 meters out from the trial. It's Munster now, working it now through uh, Callanan. And an advantage to Munster as well now. Penalty advantage coming their way. Chris uh, Farrell. Farrell gets the pass out to uh, the fullback. has been driven back there as uh, Mike Haley been pushed back. Now Casey again working the blind side out to Carberry. Carberry back to Chris Farrell. But the referee is calling them back for the penalty. Where is he going to go? Because Casey wants to go quickly. Ah, oh, come on, uh, Yaku. Oh, and there's a cheap shot from Madigan on Casey there. But I blame, I blame again. I blame uh, Yaku Pepe. He saw Casey running to the left-hand side of the field. And he watched him. And he wasted time to blow on a whistle to show where the mark was. Oh, dear goodness. Yaku Pepe is a South African referee. But he's been awful today. Right, so they are going to take the penalty from where that cheap shot was uh, taken on uh, from Madigan on Casey. So line up now to Munster, five meters out from the try line. Four minutes to go. Four minutes to go in this game. And uh, yeah, let's see uh, what Munster can do with this one. Right. So here they come. Right, uh, it's Scandal off the back. Still not able to get over the try line here is uh, Munster as they're trying valiantly to get there. Now just a meter short from the try line is Munster. Will also the fence keep out? No, they've knocked it on again. But uh, the referee's going to call them back for another penalty. Right, so five meters out from the trial and another penalty now to uh, Munster with three minutes to play in this game. Quickly taken by Casey, referee's having none of it. And he's going to call them back. Right, so they're going to the corner again is Munster now. Three minutes to go in this game. 
Leslie says I must admit at the beginning of the season when I didn't knew the teams Edinburgh was on fire on home ground. Yeah, Edinburgh was good at home, you know, uh, but you always would expect Munster, Ulster and Leinster to be right up there with the best, you know. Right, so Monster now at the back uh, through Scannell. Now Casey again. Out it comes to Healy. Oh, it's been intercepted by Ulster. And they could go all the way for just the final nail in the coffin. McElroy's going to pass it out. Could he have gone on his own? No, he couldn't. But it's uh, Stuart Moore who puts a little dab in. But Healy has come back for it for Monster. It, uh, I think McElroy should have uh, backed himself there. The kick downfield from Munster, not going to find touch. And here comes Ulster again through uh, McCloskey. McCloskey up to the 10 meter line, up over the 10 meter line. And uh, just waiting for that ball to come out. There's Ulster now. They've won the scrum. So the ball's not going to come out there. So scrum down to Ulster between the 10 and the 22. And uh, with a minute and a half to go. Uh, not your everyday cult says. So we basically now know that the Stormers are playing Alston Cape Town in the semi-finals. Well, the Stormers still have to win, unfortunately. Uh, they can't just book their place automatically. So uh, if they can play the way they play throughout the season, they should be in the semi-final against Ulster. And we all know that Ulster will come out for a grudge match to Cape Town after their last meeting. We won't forget what happened. But uh, with a minute to go, let's see if uh, if uh, Munster or Ulster can act to the total before the end of this game. A minute to go. Just a minute to go. Right. And a penalty to Munster there from that scrum. And uh, they will probably have one last chance to just get some points on the board. Ulster is already celebrating. Rikas Pretorius is playing perfectly at the moment. Palimsen is not such a big setback. Probably not your everyday cultist, but uh, if you want somebody to create something out of nothing, then Damien Palimsen is the guy to do that. And uh, again, nothing against Rikas Pretorius. Um, he's a quality inside center, but uh, he's not going to spark the magic if they need uh, that moment of magic in the game. Right, here comes the frame from Munster now, from the 22. It's uh, Hume as the player of the match. So Gavin Hume is the uh, player of the game here for Ulster today. Moxham also on for McElroy now. Alfie Fizzer says, I think it will be the Bulls against Ulster in the final. Well, just trying to uh, cause a fight again on you, Alfie. <laughs> right, so uh, Ulster is going to kick this into touch and finish this game off. Ulster are the first semi finalists of the URC in 2022, and well played by Ulster. Deserving victory for Ulster in the end over Munster, who at times have been really woeful today. And uh, congratulations to Ulster. We'll see who will join you guys in the uh, remaining semi final spots. So, Again, congratulations to Ulster. Bad luck to Munster. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, stream. We will be back tomorrow for the rest of the URC uh, quarterfinals. But until next time, guys, this is the Rugby Guru. Cheers for now.